campaign for the 2023 FIBA World Cup. Montenegro set to host Portugal here at the BMAX Arena in Group E. I'm Tim Long. It's a pleasure to be with you in the picturesque Montenegro and capital as we close out the first of the six qualifying windows elsewhere in Group E today. Hungary against France tipped off around 20 minutes ago. I'll keep you up to date with that one throughout the course of the evening. On Friday, Portugal suffered a narrow home defeat to Hungary. Montenegro, a narrow road defeat in France. So these two nations battling for a first win of the campaign here this evening. France, the big favourites, of course, in this group, having won bronze at both of the last two World Cups and Olympic silver in the summer. And the long journey to make it to the next World Cup in the Philippines, Japan and Indonesia in the summer of 2023 is well underway. These two teams desperate, though, to get their campaign really up and running with a first win. Portugal introduced first. Started with a tough 75-81 home defeat to Hungary on Friday. Montenegro to be introduced now. The home team tonight had a hard-fought 73-67 road defeat at the group favourites and reigning bronze medalist France on Friday. They were actually up by seven heading into the final quarter, but lost the fourth by a score of 24 to 11. Shooting numbers the difference. The heartbreaker for Montenegro, the free throw line, where they were just nine of 20 for 45% of the stripe. Even just 75% would have been enough for the tie. And from the field, they knocked down 10 threes at 59% accuracy. But France controlled the interior shooting 57% and holding Montenegro to just 36%. We'll take a pause now for the national anthems of the two nations. Thirty-two countries from across Europe are competing in this qualifying campaign. Eight groups of four in this first round after six games across three windows. The next two coming in February and June. The top three from each group go to the second round. And there, there'll be four groups of six with records carrying over from the first round. Six more games across three more windows. 
next August and November and finishing in February 2023 when the top three from those groups will make up the 12 European teams at the 2023 World Cup. Portugal, the visitors here for this one. Started with that 75-81 home defeat to Hungary. They suffered a bad third quarter in that, going down by as many as 16 before producing a 12-0 run in the fourth and closing the gap to just two. But Hungary held off the comeback. It was an even game in many aspects, but interior defence proved their downfall. Portugal allowing their opponents to shoot a dominant 71% from two-point range. It was a similar story for Montenegro as well. They lost the points in the paint battle. Mario Gomez's team by a count of 54 to 28. Portugal looking to go to the World Cup for the first ever time. Montenegro achieved that feat at the last tournament in 2019. As we take a look at their starting five, Justin Cobbs, the main man. He's uh, on fire this season in the Euro Cup with Inform Baduchnost, the fourth top scorer in that competition, averaging 19.2 points as well as 4.8 assists and 1.8 steals, the third best index rating in the competition and scores 16 points and had seven assists in the game on Friday. They're led by Bosco Radovic, who's been head coach since December of 2019, having worked as an assistant under Zvezdan Mitrovic before that. The man who took them to their historic first World Cup in China and now coaches Monaco. Portugal ranked 58th in the world, Montenegro in 26th. So uh, they will be the strong favourites, I'm sure, especially given they've got home court advantage here this evening. But Portugal desperate to show they're not just here to make up the numbers. This will be their first ever away game in qualifying, given they failed to get through the pre-qualifiers for the 2019 World Cup. Both of these teams, in fact, have been through the pre-qualifiers successfully this time around. Portugal had to play 10 pre-qualifiers, had an 8-2 record, beating the likes of Sweden, Belarus and Albania along the way. Montenegro only had to play four pre-qualifiers and won them all against Iceland and Denmark. It was France, of course, but Montenegro did lose on Friday, and that means they've lost their last two games in World Cup qualifying, stretching back to 2019 as well. They've never lost three in a row. It is usually a matter of fine margins for them. Each of their last six have been decided by single figures. Portugal hoping to keep it close here in Podgorica this evening, playing their first ever away World Cup qualifier after losing their home debut in this competition to Hungary. Diogo Brito there, one of their key players, a 24-year-old shooting guard, their best scorer on average in the pre-qualifiers when he fired 12.4 points per game. He also had 15 points off the bench in Friday's defeat, hit four three-pointers. Diogo Ventura, a key player at point guard as well, averaged 8.6 points, four assists in pre-qualifying. And Sasha Borovniak at centre led the team in defeat on Friday with 16 points, missing just one shot from the field and just one free throw. Justin Cobbs, the danger man for Montenegro. But Portugal have to try and keep quiet. And for them, Vladimir Mihailovic fired a stunning game-high 23 on Friday in France. Hit five three-pointers on seven attempts. 
Here we go. Two World Cup qualifying underdogs who have to do it the hard way. Ten pre-qualifiers for Portugal, four for Montenegro. Both pushed their opponents to the limit on Friday before losing game one of Group E. One will get up and running this evening. The other will fall to 0 and 2. Montenegro looking to reproduce what they did in their last cycle when they reached an historic first ever World Cup in China in 2019. Portugal dreaming of doing just that this time around for the first time in their history. And how about the defensive start for Montenegro? The rejection from Nikolic. Sasha Borovniak shut down. Here's Brito. Three-point shot as they got the ball back. And he lands another four threes on Friday and one in the opening 30 seconds here this evening. The 24-year-old impressive so far. A man who plays in Spain with uh, club Baloncesto Moron. And there's the first foul. It comes from Ventura of Portugal. Montenegro searching for their first score. Justin Cobbs looking to use the high screen. Pulls up for the long two, and he got it. Justin Cobbs taking little time to get going. Only shot five of 14 on Friday, albeit against a talented French defence. He's been absolutely on fire at club level this season. Three-point shot again, and another one for Portugal. Ventura this time, back-to-back -back threes after around a minute for Portugal. Zugic, the 18-year-old, playing from the start here for Montenegro. Didn't play at all on Friday. Cobbs is fouled. That's two on Portugal already. But Fedor Zugic in for Montenegro. An 18-year-old guard who was the youngest ever player in the Euro League when he made his debut at the age of 15 years and 157 days with Baduchnos back in 2019. It's a big occasion for him. Cobbs gets it in. Here is Zugic. He pulls up for a three and gets his first points of qualifying the 18-year-old. It gets Montenegro back within one. Portugal moving around the perimeter again, where they've been very good so far. Long range two this time, rims out. And now a chance for Montenegro to try and take the lead. If they get the ball back, and they do, they're able to keep it under their own backboard. Here goes Cobbs, bounce pass, lane opens up for the attack. And the finger roll falls and Montenegro have the lead. Zoran Nikolic, the 25-year-old centre. Montenegro by one. Brito again, he's hit a three already. This time closed down on the perimeter. Shot clock winding down, three seconds to shoot. Lost it on the baseline, tried to recover, turns it over. And Montenegro with a chance to come down the floor and continue their positive run. They've scored the last five points, although they might turn it right back over. Plenty for both head coaches to be pleased about and concerned about early on. They'll be happy with their shooters, not happy with the turnovers. Shot clock down to four here for Montenegro. Three-point shot falls flat. Portugal comfortably protecting the rebound. Barbosa. 
to the stripe, back out to Barbosa it goes. They shifted around the perimeter again, then try and drive baseline, tough shot. There are options on the perimeter for the pass. Here's Cobbs. Cobbs mid-range, fouled on the shot, will go to the line for two. Well, most of the Montenegrin offense is going to go through him. He's shooting a competition high 63% from three-point range in the Euro Cup with Baduchnos this season. He had a career night in that competition 12 days ago when he put up 33 points, five assists, four steals, three rebounds and a block. The best performance, in fact, of any player in the Euro Cup this season. He's got four points already here in three and a half minutes. Montenegro have scored the last seven without reply. Can Portugal stop the mini drought? No, they can't because it's denied by Nikolic again. His second block already. Cobbs perched deep. And they'll look to continue their run. Bounce pass to Nikolic on the offensive end this time. He's got the height advantage. Can't get the shot to fall. Down the floor swiftly come Portugal. And end that 7-0 Montenegrin run. Cobbs moving it on to the far side. Gets it back again. Nice pass, drawing two defenders to the perimeter. Wouldn't quite go for a chance at the three-point play. But that's the kind of gravity that Justin Cobbs commands. Two players concerned about his ability on the outside, opening space on the interior. He's not just an excellent scorer, Cobbs. He's an excellent passer as well. 4.8 assists a game in the Euro Cup this season. Had seven assists on Friday against France. Although he was also forced into four of Montenegro's 10 turnovers. His ingenuity, form and confidence has got uh, Nikolic to the line to continue to do his thing. Montenegro lead by three. 11 points in the first four and a half minutes for them. Portugal struggling on the defensive end. Little running hook shot doesn't go for Helval. Montenegro can run in transition. Albeit turning the ball over after failing to tame it. It was Dino Rudoncic, the 22-year-old forward, who is another of their key players. Just lost it on the dribble. He led the way in scoring and rebounding in the pre-qualifiers, where he averaged 14 points and six and a half boards. Shot the ball superbly. Only a three-point Montenegro lead, but... Portugal in foul trouble here in the first as well. Four fouls already in the opening five minutes. Five the limit per quarter. Here in FIBA rules basketball, Portugal have to reduce those fouls, have to shoot the ball better, have to protect the ball better after turning it over again. Only down by three, but the signs suggest it's starting to come off the rails for Portugal. Montenegro looking to embellish the point. Good defence that time, but they can't protect their backboard. And there's a further problem for Portugal. A chance at a three-point play. With the putback and the foul for Spasojevic. Montenegro up by six points now. But they've scored 12 of the last 14, a 12 to 2 run. Open corner three for Portugal. That doesn't go. They're really starting to struggle. Nikolic grabs the defensive board. Mihailovic, who had the 23 points against France on Friday, 
Hit five three-pointers, he gets it back. He was five of seven from downtown. This time, looking to penetrate the paint, command some attention, dish off for a dunk that rims out for Nikolic. They'll go again, and he gets it at the second bite of the cherry. And Portugal are really struggling, that, struggling now. Montenegro unable to complete the highlight reel play, but do get the points, and they count just the same. Portugal finally land a blow of their own. Cobbs, three and a half to play in the first, six the lead for Montenegro. Portugal need defensive stops. Something they have struggled to provide so far. Long range two. And they protect the backboard this time. In transition, Brito. He'll slow it down. Final three minutes of the first quarter approaching. They've moved the ball fairly well on the perimeter, Portugal. And they're not hitting most of their shots at the moment, though. That wasn't a particularly good one. Five rebounds for Nikolic already. He's been a force at both ends of the floor. Cobbs with the fizz pass that was high, well caught in the corner. And here he is again on the offensive end, Nikolic, but can't convert from close range. Britos pass to the far side, three-pointer, and a chance to run for Montenegro again, although they elect to play it slowly and find their main playmaker, Justin Cobbs. Half-time between Hungary and France. It's a 16-point lead for the French, 29-45. That's the other game in this group. For all of Portugal's problems over the first eight minutes, they're only down by six. It's a big couple of minutes to come for them, especially given the foul trouble. They don't want to be down by double figures come the end of the quarter. And that's a very real possibility when Justin Cobbs is on the floor and in the mood for Montenegro. He's got six of their 18. The lead has grown to eight. And that one forces the timeout from the Portuguese bench. You saw the shooting numbers there in that timeout. Montenegro shooting the ball ever so well. Portugal hit their first two shots in the game, both of them threes. Since then, they've hit just two of 11 from the field. With two minutes to play in the quarter as well. Any fouls from their defense will send Montenegro to the line. That impacts how tenacious they can play on the defensive end. There's a lot going wrong for the Portuguese right now. You almost feel the end of this quarter is about survival in terms of damage limitation and starting afresh in the second. Sergio Silva to inbound for Portugal. And there's a whistle straight away and a turnover. 
They just cannot get it going. All kinds of problems. Shooting the ball, stopping the opposition, protecting their backboard. Protecting the ball. Montenegro a chance at a double-digit lead for the first time. Shot clock down to the final four seconds. They'll go at it on the interior, and to great effect, it's Radovic who makes it a 10-point lead. Barbosa. Final minute and a half of the first quarter. Jose Barbosa again. Bounce pass into the centre towards the player who set the pick. And the foul is on the defence on Mihailovic. That's Montenegro's first foul of the game. Mihailovic feeling a little unfortunate. It's not going to plan for Portugal right now, but they have an opportunity at the strike pit with uh, Daniel Halval, who plays for the Portuguese champions, Sporting Lisbon. They're at a point where they need every point they can possibly get, and he obliges by converting their first free throw of the evening. Pavlicevic played just eight minutes in France on Friday. Some bench players for Montenegro giving some starters a break here in this commanding position. Bollying his way back towards the basket to do his thing again is Radovic. He's owning the paint right now. Sergio Silva across to the far side it goes, shifted on by Halval. The pass was targeted towards Halval, but deflected, and Montenegro can move and do it swiftly. Three-point shot off the mark for the man who hit five of seven on Friday, Mihailovic. And then Pavlicevic trying to block the passing lane to stop Portugal's tr transition. It's getting rather frantic for them. They need to keep their cool. There's a long way to go in this game. Just slowly chip away. Try and play strong defence. Careful, clever offence. No need to rush. No need to panic. Helval to Silva. 12 on the shot clock. Around a 12 or 13 second differential. Mid-range. Shake off two. Misses. The tip will drop though. That is such a big score from their big man Daniel Helval. With points really at a premium for Portugal. The offensive rebound to make it a single-figure game. Drifting three-point shot. They could do with the defensive stop to finish the quarter as well. It'll push shot falls, though. Montenegro bounce back with a big blow of their own at the buzzer. Nemanja Radovic running riot late in the first quarter. And Montenegro lead by 10, 24 to 14 over Portugal. Look at the shooting numbers. Montenegro dominant in all departments. It was a pretty good start from Portugal. Despite the rejection on their first offense, they converted a three off the back of that inbound. Brito knocking down. They hit their first two shots. After that block, at least, both of them threes. They went up by four points at two to six, but Montenegro responded with a run. And they haven't really looked back from there. Justin Cobbs, a key part, as you would expect. He's got six points and a couple of assists already. After that, points really hard to come by for Portugal. And the centres for Montenegro 
have hammered down their authority. We saw it early on from Nikolic. And then from the power forward, Radovic as well. Montenegro dominant in terms of the front line. And leading by 10 at the start of the second quarter. They're only one of four on the outside. It really has been the front line that's dominated. They're eight of 13 from two-point range, the home team. Portugal start with the ball at the start of the second quarter, down by 10, 24-14. Gonzalo Delgado to inbound, 23-year-old power forward who plays in Spain with Girona. Had a good contribution in the pre-qualifiers, 8.2 points, four and a half rebounds a game. Here's Brito. Can Portugal pull their opponents back in in this second quarter? Barbosa. Moving swiftly on the dribble, lost the handle, recovered it, passed it back. Three-point shot off the mark. They'll battle for the rebound to no avail. Pavlicevic. Gets it back. Plenty of the bench players still in for Montenegro. They've been just as effective as the starters so far. Mihailovic. He turns it over. Scored all of his 23 points on Friday from the bench. Montenegro showing their strength in depth. He can afford to smile at the moment. Up by 10. Their third turnover. Portugal have had four. Silva. Amiel in for the first time. 25-year-old point guard. Left-hand dribble down the edge of the paint. Off the window. Offensive board and stick back again for Hal Val. One of those at the end of the first quarter and one at the start of the second. Considering they're shooting the ball poorly, Portugal. Second chance scoring opportunities. Absolutely vital. That's the first two offensive rebounds they've had in the game as well. Both of them from Helval in the space of about a minute and a half of play. Wide open, three off the broken play for Montenegro. Doesn't go, but Portugal, despite grabbing a couple of offensive rebounds, can't at the moment grab a defensive board. The defence has to dig in again. Third chance scoring opportunity for Montenegro. And a foul that comes on the floor. Montenegro are talented enough to have to try and defend against them once, then twice. If it's three times, you're really asking for trouble. They've got 14 on the clock after the foul, which was the first of this second quarter for either team. Mihailovic to inbound. Pavlicevic. Teammate running interference on the perimeter. Trying to thread it through a packed paint. And there's foul number two on Portugal. High pass, a little risky, but... Recovered here by Radovic, who's been in fine form so far. Back out it comes, though. Plenty of time on the shot clock not to panic. Deep three-point shot off the mark. Can they protect their backboard? This time they do. And for the first time in what feels like an eternity, Portugal finally have the ball back. They're only down by eight. Helval across to the far side, back to Amiel. They're hoping for inspiration off the bench. Nice pass from him, creating the open three, and it goes to close the gap to five. A huge shot from Francisco Amaranchi 
And two bench players bringing the goods for Portugal. Amiel with the assist. Amaranchi with the three. The 21-year-old closes the gap to five points. Portugal have been poor, but they're showing their character. Montenegro haven't taken their chances to really stretch the lead and put Portugal in the rearview mirror. Portugal have had to grind it out. Scrap, scratch and claw. On the defensive end. And now they're turning that effort into points on the offensive end. It's a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought for Montenegro at the start of the second quarter after pouring in 24 points in the first. In that time, Portugal have scored five without reply. There's a foul on the defence. That's a couple on Portugal. This one on Amiel. I hope that Justin Cobbs can make a difference coming back in. Mihailovic. Here is Kops. Looking to go to work on the perimeter. Mihailovic down the baseline, looking back out. Great use of the inside-outside game to get the defence moving about, but the floater won't fall for Slavkovic. Portugal looking to close the gap further. Silva. Lovely bounce pass, nice cut to the basket as well. And another score for Amaranchi. The 21-year-old, the spark. And Portugal back within one possession. He's got the last five points in this game. Montenegro now over three minutes without a point in this second quarter. They'll back in and go to work on the interior. But this time closed down was the previously effective Radovic. And Portugal can run. No look pass in transition. And the open layup blown by Delgado. The hard part was already done. That's a tough one to take for Portugal. They've got to try and put it behind them. And just keep doing what they have been doing. Well, there's another whistle. And he is understandably upset. Because Portugal riding a wave of momentum at the moment, doing well on the defensive end. They don't want to get into foul trouble. It's a fine balancing act, of course, between playing tight, solid defense and committing fouls. There's a technical that's being called here on the bench, which sends Justin Cobbs to the line. He gets one for that to take his tally to seven. Bosco Radovic on the Montenegrin bench can at least be happy that his team have put a point on the board and stopped the drought. It's taken nearly four minutes to do so. And now they get one from the field as well after the penetration from Cobbs, the pass and the finish from Radovic. He's got eight points. They're back up by six. Now, I wondered if there'd been a foul called on the floor on Portugal before the technical to take them to three team fouls. We're still only seeing two in terms of those yellow lights underneath their name at the bottom of your picture. Safe to say, it's getting a bit heated on the Portuguese bench. Silva. He'll take the long two. 
into the hands of Radovic. Justin Cobbs, he's going to go to work again. On the dribble this time, off the crossovers, looking back out. Gets it back from Nikolic. Nikolic sets the screen. Radovic puts it on the floor. They've packed the paint, Portugal. But he still finds a way to finish. Nemanja Radovic. Double figures for him in the first half. He's five of six from the field for those ten points. Montenegro's lead back to eight. Portugal get away with it that time. Colliding in the paint. They lost the ball. But it's still in their possession. Final touch off the Montenegro player. No foul called. Out of bounds off the hands of Radovic. There's 11 left on the shot clock, so plenty of time. From 10 down, they got within three, but the lead is back up to eight for Montenegro. Amaranchi, Voitso, around it comes to Amiel, shot clock down to five now, bounce pass through a gap, found its way through, but Kairos was losing sight of the ball. Miguel Kairos, who has uh, only just come in. Midway point of the second quarter here, an eight-point margin, a chance for Montenegro to make it double digits again. Radoncic edging his way under the hoop, looking back out. Corner three. The largest lead of the evening at 11. Vladimir Mihailovic, the Montenegrin marksman. His sixth three of this qualifying campaign. Portugal to try and cancel it out, and they do. The perfect response. Knocked down by Vladislav Wojtso. Another young player stepping up to the plate for Portugal. The 22-year-old forward after Amaranchi. The 21-year-old shooting guard had converted their previous triple. Spin into traffic and a foul. And that, I believe, will be four on Portugal now. So with four and a half minutes to play in the first half, any further fouls from the Portuguese defence send Montenegro to the stripe. They will get there now anyway, with it being a shooting foul. But first, we'll have a timeout. Montenegro with a chance off the back of this from the stripe to take the lead back to 10. Portugal have done well to initially try and close the gap and then just to try and hang in the fight. They have to keep doing that, stay in the game, plant a seed of doubt in Montenegro minds. At the moment, though, three-point shooting is really keeping them in it. The four of seven on the outside in this first half, only five of 16 from two-point range. And it's the complete opposite for Montenegro, taking and making plenty more shots 
on the interior. Just one of two on that trip to the line, though. Their first miss from the stripe in the game. They're seven of eight as a team. They're up by nine. Pass inside, and Hal Vau is there, spinning basket side to score. He's performed really well, the 25-year-old centre, Daniel Halvau. A couple of big offensive rebounds and stick backs. And that one closes the gap to seven. Final four minutes of the first half. Rodontic down the baseline and forced into the travel and the turnover. Dino Rodontic. Again, the Portuguese defence doing a much better job. They surrounded him, trapped him put up the ceiling so that he couldn't score. The long arms of Halvau. Again, he's doing it on offense and defense and straight away at the other end, gets towards the basket, goes up and draws contact. So a chance at two more points for him from the stripe. We've seen the young guns from the perimeter in this quarter for Portugal. Amaranchi, the 21-year-old, and uh, Voitso, the 22-year-old. And now we're seeing the 25-year-old centre really start to command the interior. He's making his foul shots as well. Four of four in the game now. He's up to 10 points. And he's only missed one shot, grabbed three rebounds, two offensive rebounds, and the gap is five again. Back out to Cobbs, the elite three-point shooter, misses. And then battling for the board was Nikolic, drawing a whistle. Halval's second foul. And they won't want him to get into foul trouble, that's for sure. He's been the Portuguese protagonist for this comeback. Ten points is double their next best scorer. He's got more rebounds than anyone on the team as well. Nikolic was doing a similar job for Montenegro in the first quarter. Their 25-year-old centre now up to nine points and five rebounds. Similar numbers to Helval. Seven the lead for Montenegro. Kairos. Final three minutes of a fascinating first half approaching. Barbosa. That's the third foul on Montenegro in this quarter. On the teenager Zugic. Now plays for Ratio Farm Ulm in the German Bundesliga in the Euro Cup. Got free on the baseline before shifting it on. It was nice play from Amaranchi, who's been really lively. And they let him go on the inbound. Little up fake, and then drawing the foul on the way down was Delgado. The foul is on Nikolic, his second. So uh, the Montenegrin star centre, along with the Portuguese star centre in this game, both have two fouls now. They level in pretty much every aspect, or close to. Montenegro's fourth foul, so for the final three minutes of the first half, any foul from either defence will send the opposition offence to the stripe. Delgado makes both for Portugal on that occasion and closes the gap to five again. In comes Barovic at centre for Montenegro to give Nikolic a break on those two fouls. Zugic. 
trapped by Amaranchi. Two talented youngsters going toe to toe. Cobbs. He's been limited in this second quarter. You can't hold him down for long. Justin Cobbs up to nine first half points. That's his first field goal of the second quarter. His only other point was the technical. Far side, open three for Portugal. Big shot, big offensive rebound. Now you might get a second chance here. Amaranchi guarded by Cobbs. He pulls it back, shoots over the top of him and scores. This talented 21-year-old pulling Portugal back from the brink. Amaranchi off the bench and now has seven points on perfect shooting. You see the assist stats there. I did say earlier, remember, that Portugal were moving the ball pretty well, but not hitting their shots. They are starting to hit them now. And that is showing by the fact they've had three more assists than Montenegro over the first 18 minutes. They're finding their rhythm. They're finding their confidence. And they're finding their way back into this game. From 11 down. And they've kept it close, got within five again. They have at one stage briefly been within three. Final two minutes of the first half approaching. Zugic across to the far side. Spasojevic. Zugic. Barovic to find Cobbs. The primary option for the offense. Draws the double team. Passes on. Open player near side. Now it's Cobbs. Off the nice ball movement. Beats the buzzer. Beautiful Montenegro movement. Justin Cobbs up to 12 points for the first half. And then a foul as the entry pass goes in towards Kairos. But that was lovely play off the back of the timeout. As drawn up by Bosco Radovic on the Montenegrin bench. Leading to the open three for Cobbs. Montenegro at the foul limit for the second quarter, so Miguel Queiroz at the line. Had 13 points on Friday when he hit six of his 11 shots from the field. Four rebounds, two offensive rebounds and three assists as well. Just one of two at the stripe on that particular trip. Portugal down by seven, a minute and a half to play in the first half. Cobbs, who's now the leading scorer in this game with 12 points. Five of them coming in a flash over the last minute or two. He creates the space for his teammate this time. Three-pointer off the mark. Another offensive rebound for Montenegro. Portugal have found it hard in that regard. Have to brace themselves again. Bounce pass into traffic. Grabbed in a pack of those Red Portuguese jerseys. They try and collapse onto Redoncic. But the final touch out of bounds off Delgado. Still Montenegrin ball. In fact, they've called a foul. That's what he's disappointed about. I thought it might be a Montenegrin inbound with just a couple of seconds to shoot. Instead, it looks like a foul on Delgado. And a trip to the line for two. For Redoncic. He misses the first. 22-year-old who had 11 points, 5 rebounds, a steal and a block in France on Friday. 
fairly efficient as well. Three of six from the field, four of five from the line in that one. After missing that first free throw here, he converts the second. Eight the lead for Montenegro. As it has been for large parts of this first half, around about this margin, three-point shot for Portugal. Very quickly indeed on the offense that time, Amaranchi is shooting the lights out. He's got 10 points, and I don't think he's missed yet. Five the gap. They've found it hard to defend these situations, Portugal. That's better, and they grab the defensive board as well. Another thing they found tough. Five-second differential between shot and game clock at the end of the first half, so Portugal would be wise to hold it as long as possible to leave Montenegro little time in which to respond. Barbosa. Delgado, he takes it with five left to shoot. It was a static contested shot, not the best. Zugic down the floor, three-point shot off the mark. And that will do it for a thrilling first half in Podgorica. Montenegro have led by as many as 11, but Portugal have refused to let them get away. Half-time, Montenegro 41, Portugal 36. A fairly sizable disparity in terms of the interior shooting percentage, but Portugal's threes keeping them in the contest. Five of ten from downtown for 50%. They've got three more assists in the game off their nice ball movement, but rebound numbers hurting them right now. Portugal grabbing four offensive rebounds. It feels like many more than that. Or at Montenegro, in fact, I beg your pardon, grabbing seven offensive rebounds. That's more like it. Several double-digit scorers already. Twelve for Justin Cobbs. Leads the way of everyone. The first quarter belonged to Montenegro. A bit of interior defense forcing Portugal out to the perimeter, which wasn't a bad thing for them. They knocked down their first two shots, both threes. Brito with the first. They went up by four, but Montenegro responded with a big run, sparked by 18-year-old Zugic. Scored 12 of the next 14 points, Montenegro. They've been up by as many as 11. Portugal had to weather a storm. Had to dig in on the defensive end after losing the first quarter by 10 and conceding 24 points. But they bounced back in the second to win it by five, 17-22. And to halve that 10-point deficit down to five at half time. Radovic with 10 points for Montenegro. One of two scorers in double figures for them, along with the 12 points of Justin Cobbs. A big performance at centre for Daniel Halval for Portugal. A couple of offensive rebounds when they were really struggling to score. Absolutely vital in trying to turn the tide in favour of the Portuguese and get them on the comeback trail. And then they turn to the perimeter. And in particular, to the 21-year-old Francisco Amaranchi, who is four of four from the field for 10 points in just nine minutes, including two three-pointers. Doing it on the interior as well. Halval finding him that time. A nice connection between the two. And they are the two players leading the way for Portugal. On 10 points apiece. Justin Cobbs leading the way of everybody with 12. And also capable of facilitating as well. Has three assists in the half. In terms of shooting, he's four of six from the field, including one three. Montenegro doing most of their work on the interior, though. Where they're shooting at 55% so far. Zoran Nikolic has eight points as their third top scorer. They've only hit three threes in the game so far. Portugal have hit five. And they're going to need to continue in that vein, perhaps, Portugal, if they are to complete the comeback. They're down by five at half time.
Welcome back to Podgorica. Half time here between Montenegro and Portugal as we take a look at the top scorers for their respective sides. Two players, in fact, on 10 points for Portugal. Daniel Helval, who we're featuring, the 25 uh, year old centre. And also 10 points for the 21 year old shooting guard, Francisco Amaranchi. Those two really have, not just in the numbers, but in their presence. Their point scoring and their moments being the keys for Portugal remaining in this game. As for Montenegro, as you might expect, Justin Cobbs, who leads all scorers in this game. He scored six in the first quarter and then suffered a bit of a drought, in fact, in the second quarter. The Portuguese defence really tightening up, not just on him, but in general. After Montenegro scored 24 points in the first, they were held to 17 in the second. It took a long time for Cobbs to get his first in the second quarter. He converted a technical that was called on the Portugal bench, but he then, in the space of a few seconds, was able to knock down a three and a two for five more points in a flash to take his tally up to 12. And at half time, it's a five point Montenegrin lead. There are the double figure scorer. Here's Nemanja Radovic, who's got 10 points and only missed one shot. Five of six on the interior. As far as Portugal are concerned, it's been the big one-two punch combination inside-outside for them. Halval on the interior. The centre, who's got 10 points on three of four shooting from the field, four of four from the line. And Amaranchi, the outside threat, 10 points, including a couple of threes. They've got more assists in the game than Montenegro, moving the ball well right from the start. But in the first quarter, they weren't shooting it well when they were held to just 14 points. And they certainly started to get their shooters in rhythm with confidence in the second. They need to continue that in the third. Halvau also with three rebounds on his stat line, two of them on the offensive glass that he converted into points straight away. Those offensive rebounds, probably the plays of the game for Portugal.
as they look for their first win of these qualifiers after a perfect 4-0 record in the pre-qualifiers to get them here. They joined at the second round of the pre-qualifiers. Portugal had to go from the first round, which means they've played 10 games in pre-qualifying already before their qualifier opener on Friday. It's allowed Portugal to generate some cohesiveness amongst that group of players, which perhaps is a part of the reason they've moved the ball so well on the offensive end and got the nine assists in the first half, three more than Montenegro. Given these are two clubs, two countries rather, who failed to qualify for the next Euro basket and only have one previous World Cup appearance between them, they are underdogs on the world stage in terms of getting to the FIBA 2023 World Cup. Justin Cobbs might have other ideas. Given his talent, Montenegro have a chance of beating anyone. Montenegro start the second half with the ball in the hands of Cobbs, up by five. Doncic turns it over. At the start of the second half, after 12 seconds, that will not please Bosco Radovic, the head coach of Montenegro. And Tura, oh, banked in. The three is good off the backboard for Ventura. He hit one right at the start of the game in the opening minute and knocks one down in the first minute of the second half as well to close the gap to two. Now, this is as close as Portugal have been since the opening few minutes of the game. Nice pass, far side, three-point shot to answer right back for Montenegro from Mihailovic to restore that five-point lead. His second of the game and his seventh of this weekend. Both teams with three-pointers in the first minute of the third. Nice pass halfway up in terms of going for his shot and dishing off to Borovniak, who got fouled. We've not seen anywhere near as much from Sasha Borovniak here as we saw on Friday. It's been more at centre about Daniel Helval. But Borovniak was the team's leading scorer on Friday with 16 points. He was 8 of 9 at the foul line in that game and he misses one here. He was also 4 of 5 from the field. A very different story tonight. He's only played 5.5 minutes. He's missed all 3 of his shots from the field. And his first free throw attempt. He does finally get up and running in terms of his scoring. And that was only Portugal's second miss of the game from the line. The 8 of 10 as a team. Passing lanes blocked off. Still Montenegro and ball up by four. Mihailovic will inbound. He's seven of ten from three-point range in this tournament so far. Here he goes again. Nice footwork, three-point shot. Mihailovic is money from distance. Make it eight of eleven from three-point range this weekend. Amaranchi for three. Can't convert. The whistle goes. Montenegro have gone up by seven here. Amaranchi got free for the three, having hit all four of his shots here tonight. The foul is on Mihailovic, his second. 
the basket would have counted with the foul away from the ball. Portugal get the inbounding situation instead. Second foul of the third quarter on Montenegro. Portugal, who've been in a bit of foul trouble in both of the first two quarters, haven't picked up any yet. Montenegro looking to create a bit of breathing room again. It was hot to handle for Cops, but he did well with it. Mihailovic looking to battle his way to the basket this time and shows he can score on the interior as well. He's really got going now, 11 points, and five of them have come over the last minute or so. Nine the lead for Montenegro. Ventura. To the inside it goes, back out into the hands of Brito. Shot clock winding down on him. Is he aware? Gets it away, but nowhere near the rim, and a shot clock violation. Montenegro. With Cobbs for the double digit lead. Montenegrin momentum mounting. Once more here in Podgorica. Back to back threes for them. Back in control. 12 the lead and a Portuguese turnover as well. Radovic will slow it down. Look back out. Cobbs. Shifts it on. Little lane opens up to try and drive into for Radonjic. And he's fouled. There is the first foul on Portugal here in the third quarter. Fifteen points for Cobbs now. Eleven for Mihailovic. Ten for Radovic. Three scorers in double figures for Montenegro. Twelve points the lead. After all of Portugal's good work, all of a sudden... In a few blinks of the eye, Montenegro have the largest lead of the evening. Radoncic will stretch it from the stripe as well. Fourteen, the largest lead so far. Ventura. Prodding and probing on the perimeter. Tight defense from Mihailovic on Brito. Brito switches, drives past his man, kicks it back out. Still tight defense. Bouncing off a body and fading and finishing was Diogo Ventura. Beautifully done. Eight points for him. Twelve the gap. Cobbs with the floater, misses, rebound secured by Kairos. A chance for Portugal to put together back-to-back -to -back scores here. And you feel it's at a pivotal point in terms of the margin here. There's a turnover from Portugal again, intercepted by Mihailovic. With 16 minutes to play, Montenegro up by 12. If it gets up towards 15, 16, then Portugal really do have a problem. Brito with the defensive board. Brito's pass. I'm not sure who he was looking for. Cobbs cross court. Mihailovic. They'll slow it down and play in the half court, Montenegro. Mihailovic starting to feel it now. Looks back out. Radoncic opens up for him to attack. Stop midair. Now Portugal can push the ball forward. Three on one momentarily. And it only needed one, Diogo Brito. So the margin back to 10, Portugal with four points without reply. Three-point shot. He is in the zone. Vladimir Mihailovic again. Four of five from long range tonight. And three of them have come in this quarter. Helval in the game, drawing a foul.
Well, Val's had a bit of a break at the start of this second half. Back in now. The joint top scorer for Portugal on 10 points. And still their leading rebounder with three. That's the third foul on Nemanja Radovic. He's been one of the most positive players for Montenegro, so that's a, a good piece of information for Portugal. He goes to the bench on those three fouls with 10 points. Halval goes to the line. He's been very efficient in everything he's done. Daniel Halval tonight, 12 points, a perfect six of six at the stripe. 11 the gap. Zugic on to Radovic. He's remained on the floor, in fact, after that third foul. Tough shot, halfway down, out again. A chance for Portugal to make it single figures. Halval going to work once more and continuing to bring it on the interior. Halval with 14 points. He's only missed one shot from the field or from the stripe. Cobbs across court, touch pass to Zugic, sidestep, three-point shot, off all the way. Portugal only down by nine, mounting another comeback. Pirouette in the paint, stripped away beyond the baseline, still Portuguese possession. Cobbs did well. Deflecting the ball away, but plenty of time on the shot clock. Ventura, back it goes to Voitso. Barbosa, far side. Baseline burst, little up fake. Composure, foul and finish. Miguel Queiroz with a chance at a three-point play. Cool and composed in the paint, trapped under the backboard, but expertly found a way out. We'll go to the benches with Portugal having closed the gap to seven and a chance to tag one more to their tally from the strike when we return. Well, just when you think that Montenegro are showing their muscle, that they're pulling away, creating an insurmountable gap, Portugal show they refuse to wave the white flag. Montenegro, just a few minutes ago, had the largest lead of the evening at 14. That gap has been halved. Kairos has a chance to complete a three-point play at the stripe off the back of the timeout to take the deficit down to six. Montenegro also in foul trouble in this third quarter. That was their fourth. Any further fouls for the next three and a half minutes from their defence will send Portugal to the line, although they missed that one, so the gap remains at seven. As a team, they are shooting the ball well from the stripe, 10 of 13 now. Cobbs. Portugal, by contrast, have committed just one foul, so they can try and play tenaciously on the defensive end. But excellent offence so often beats excellent defence. Mihailovic that time going into the land of the Giants, taking on the centre, taking the contact and taking the points. Over the top of Halval, the 2 metres 8 centre, 
not just a chance for a three-point play, but he also puts the third personal foul on Helval with that aggressive move. He's an excellent shooter, Mihailovic, but he can't convert the free throw from the field. He's six of eight tonight, including four of five on the perimeter. 16 points to lead Montenegro, as he did with 23 points in France on Friday. Calvao looking for some payback. Got it high off the window. He is having... A super evening. If Portugal are going to stand a chance here, they have Halval to thank. 16 for him now. And he's still only missed one shot. Cobbs with the mid-range floater doesn't go. Portugal protect their backboard. Only down by seven. Ventura. Waiting for teammates to arrive. Queiroz. So many Portuguese players have played a part, though. Little floater from the stripe. Halval, can he grab another offensive rebound? His presence, his persistence, forced the last touch from Montenegro to get it back into Portuguese possession. Sixteen points, three rebounds, two offensive rebounds. Very close to another there for Halval. Three-point shot. Ventura. Halval underneath it again. Ventura got it. And finished underneath. The gap closed to five. Ten for Ventura now. The third scorer into double figures for Portugal. Two minutes of the third quarter to play. Open three. Far side. Can't resist. Misses it though. Spasojevic. Voitso down the floor swiftly. Ventura. Lots of Portuguese scorers really believing now on the offensive end. Halval setting the screen, rolling inside. Ball was kicked. Halval is the cornerstone that holds the whole thing together. He's got uh, teammates buzzing around him on the interior and the perimeter. And his performance, Halval, has opened up the space for them. Barbosa, Ventura, Barbosa. Here is Halavau. Shot clock down to the final three seconds. There was still a bit of time, but the half court heave from Ventura falls short. And the first panicky Portuguese offense in a while. They had plenty of them in the first quarter. Cobb slices and dices the defense to stretch the lead back to seven. The game high 17 for Cobbs now. A Portuguese three, though, in retaliation. They miss it. It was a really good open look. We're getting to the stage of this game in this kind of situation where those shots might prove decisive when it's all said and done. A turnover for Montenegro, though. Final minute of the third quarter. Portugal down by seven. Want to keep the momentum going their way. Barbosa down the edge of the paint. Couldn't quite wrap the pass around the corner. Deflected out of bounds off Nikolic. In comes Pedro Bastos from the Portuguese bench. He's only played seven and a half minutes. Takes a three, makes a three. Pedro Bastos in off the bench and in with a bang. On the flyby, might have had feet on the line. It is a two. It's a five-point margin. Shot clock turned off at the end of the third quarter. Justin Cobbs looking to create the final shot of the period. Using the screen of Nikolic, there's a foul. Portugal did have that one and do have another one to give. Six seconds left now. Cobbs was just trying to throw it up to suggest he was in the act of shooting. One more foul to give for Portugal. Cobbs 
He's going to take it from distance and he's fouled on the three. That's a tough one to take for Portugal on Jose Barbosa, who himself moves into the landing zone of Justin Cobbs when he's elevated. Trying to get touch tight to one of the best three-point shooters in the business. And that could be a costly foul. Cobbs at the line for three. A chance to make it an eight-point Montenegrin lead heading into the final quarter. Portugal will have 3.2 seconds to try and have the final shot of this quarter. And that's one of those fouls, one of those plays that feels like a bit of a backbreaker after all of your hard work. And Cobbs rubs salt in the Portuguese wounds. 20 for him. Full court attempt off the mark. Credit Portugal for their persistent fighting and scrapping and their quality. But Montenegro still have breathing room here, heading into the fourth quarter, up by eight, 64-56. Portugal really turning it around on the interior. Actually a better percentage than Montenegro now. Although their three-point percentage has started to fall. Montenegro winning that third quarter by three points, 23 to 20. Despite Portugal getting back within a couple of points. Mihailovic was the man of the moment for Montenegro in the third. 16 points in the game for him. I believe 11 of them came in that quarter. Doing it inside and out. And then later on in the period, Cobbs took on the responsibility again. 20 for him on 6 of 10 shooting altogether. As we've seen on a couple of occasions where Montenegro have opened up a gap in this game, though. Portugal will refuse to lie down. Halvao has been excellent for them. The centre with 16 points to lead their comeback attempts, only missing one shot, either from the field or from the line. Do get your hands on the World Cup qualifiers. FIBA app, all of the action. All of the scores, all of the stats right at your fingertips. Well worth the download. And this one has been well worth the watch. It is far from finished. Just an eight-point Montenegrin lead heading into the final ten minutes. Portugal have shown their ability to reel Montenegro back in on a couple of occasions from an 11-point deficit. In the first half, they got within three. From a 14-point deficit in the third quarter, they got within two. They start the fourth down by eight. They start the fourth with the ball. Looking to send a message early on. And there's a whistle on the first offense. The foul on Nikolic. It may have just been a, a kick ball. Voitso takes it inside, trying to thread the eye of the needle. And they'll turn it over. And Voitso hit a three earlier on. He's had a couple of opportunities on the perimeter that he's passed up since then and elected that time to try and drive into tight quarters. Cobbs gets fouled on the shot. You really feel that foul on his three-point attempt with just three seconds to go in that third quarter was a pivotal moment. Taking the margin from five to eight, heading into this period. And now he's out the line again to try and take the lead back to double figures.
21 points for Justin Cobbs. Make it 22. He's a perfect eight of eight at the stripe. Six of 10 from the field, including two threes. Barbosa. They get the good look for three. This time, Voitso does take it, misses it, though. Portugal again at a stage where they just have to weather a storm, you feel. Down by 10, nine minutes to play. Don't crumble. Stay in the game. Easier said than done when Cobbs is attacking you. He misses that one. Offensive rebound, though. Splitting a couple of defenders. Picking up the foul and picking up the point. Zoran Nikolic. A chance at a 13-point lead for Montenegro. Brito comes in off the bench for Portugal. Nikolic goes to the line. Can't complete the AM1. Twelve the lead end for Montenegro. Brito feeds it inside. Kairos. Shot clock winding down. Barbosa back towards Kairos, turns it over. It's in danger of coming off the rails for Portugal. The turnovers have started to come too frequently. Mihailovic. He's going to go to work again off the crossovers to the elbow. Spins back, fades away, misses the two. Offensive rebound once more. A fresh 14 on the shot clock. Baseline spin. Adjusts his body, draws the foul and earns a trip to the line. Radisav Spasojevic. Montenegro. Very much on top right now. It would take a big Portuguese turnaround down the final stretch of this game to avoid going 0-2. Montenegro less than eight minutes away from picking up their first win of this qualifying campaign under Basco Radovic. They've got the first four points of this quarter. Looking to tag two more to that tally here. They also scored the final three points of the third quarter, remember, with Cobbs at the stripe. So it's uh, now a nine-point unanswered run for Montenegro, stretching a five-point lead up to 14. Foul far side on Montenegro. Portugal have already committed three in the opening two and a half minutes of this quarter. That's another problem for them. That's just Montenegro's first. Brito. Laval trying to run interference on the perimeter. And they get onto the inside for the floater instead. Halval trying to tip it. Not once, but twice over the baseline. Montenegro ball. He's frustrated. His impact has started to wane. You get the feeling we're getting towards that stage where Portugal might just have to light it up from long range to stand a chance. Mihailovic, a man who's very capable of doing that for Montenegro, draws the defence like moths to a flame, kicks to the corner for the dagger from deep. Knocked down by Nemanja Radovic. The lead continues to grow. Montenegro by 17. And an offensive foul on Portugal. 
And we're getting to the stage where they might now need a Montenegro miracle. A timeout with Montenegro in complete control with seven minutes to play. Confirmation of a double-double for Zoran Nikolic. Now 10 points, 10 rebounds. He's three of six from the field, four of five from the line. Got two offensive rebounds, two steals and two blocks as well. An excellent all-round performance from the centre. One of the key players for Montenegro playing with Montenegrin League and Adriatic League powerhouses. Poduchnost Podgorica. Also competing in the Euro Cup as well. And they've had an excellent start to the season in that competition. Radovic goes out for good. He picks up his fifth foul here. And it shouldn't be too much of a problem for Montenegro despite the protests. Radovic goes out as their third top scorer so far on 13 points. Six of nine from the field, including 1-3. They're up by 17. It's not over yet, especially if Brito converts. He'll take the banker. Perhaps a fortunate finish to spark a Portuguese comeback. They close the gap to 14. They need defensive stops. Combined with offensive conversions, they need to build momentum, put together a string of scores. They need a lot to go their way. But they are not out of it yet. Another big problem is the foul trouble. That one from Amiel. Off the ball. And it sends Zoran Nikolic to the line. Just the one point. 15 the lead, though, for Montenegro. Six minutes and change remaining. Amiel. Ventura. Brito. He's just banked one in. This time takes it down the edge of the paint. Had to be careful not to step on the baseline. Ventura for three. Strings it, but under the rim. An appeal for possession, Portugal. They're out of time anyway, pretty much. 0.1 on the clock because the shot didn't hit the rim. That's a tough one for Ventura because he was wide open. And he's knocked down a couple from the outside this evening. We're at a stage where those kind of chances really need to go. With less than six minutes to play. They do get the ball back. They don't have time, though. An expression that pretty much tells the position that Portugal are in here. From the bench, from Mario Gomez. Cobbs. Nikolic rolls inside, passes to the corner, three-point shot. Radonjic lets it rain. 
Nice ball movement again from Montenegro. That makes it an 18-point margin. And the Montenegro mountain gets even steeper to climb. Five and a half minutes to play. Delgado, Amiel, not yet mission impossible, but it's certainly mission improbable. Amiel to the baseline, to the far side, turns it over. Mon it's uh, Mihailovic who grabs it far side. Midway point of the final quarter. 38 points combined for Cobbs and Mihailovic. Shot clock ticking down. Oh, lovely pass. There's magic in the Montenegrin air. Dino Radoncic with the razzle-dazzle assist. And it puts Montenegro up by 20 for the first time. Three-point shot, Amiel. Portugal have run out of gas. He's going to take a timeout. They're down by 20, only four and a half to play. Montenegrin fans showing their appreciation for the performance of their team, particularly here in the fourth quarter. Mihailovic can't convert as he looked to demonstrate his shooting range. We've not seen a replay yet of that assist from Radoncic, which was perhaps the highlight of the game. Hopefully we'll get to see it at the end of the quarter, if not before. We'll go to the benches with Montenegro up by 20. Four minutes to play. There's been plenty of Podgorica passion here tonight. They've watched their team produce a pretty accomplished performance. It's going to be a one-and-one one record for Montenegro. Portugal set to fall to 0-2. And, Unless they can produce one of the greatest comebacks over the last four minutes. Inside it goes. Nice bit of footwork. Can't get free, though. Delgado of Nikolic, who's performed well at both ends of the floor. Mihailovic. Nikolic moves into the paint. Around the perimeter it comes. Radoncic can't find the pass this time in traffic. Ventura fouled by Pavlicevic. Montenegro's fourth. Here in the fourth. On that previous Portuguese possession, it was the third block of the game from Nikolic. He's now got 11 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, three blocks and two steals. We might have seen the huge scoring performances from Justin Cobbs with 22 and Vladimir Mihailovic with 16. But the best efficiency rating of any player on the court tonight is with the Montenegrin centre, Zoran Nikolic.
Portugal get the ball back after they called the unsportsman like it seems and they knock down a three Barbosa he makes it a 15 point margin five quick fire points for Portugal to take it back from 20 and Bosco Radovic on the Montenegrin bench wants to dot the I's and cross the T's by calling the timeout The rebounding numbers tell a story of their own. Montenegro, very good in the first quarter. Portugal got on the comeback trail in a big way in the third quarter when they had the better of the boards. But uh, it's faded away here in the fourth. The Inquisition goes on for them. Still down by 15 despite a, a positive last few seconds three minutes and change remaining Nikolic the best performer here this evening three-point shot Radoncic got nothing a chance for Portugal to push forward again he passed up the opportunity for the 3k Ross Both teams at the foul limit now. Or was that the only the fourth on Montenegro? The officials are discussing something here. Coach Radovic on the Montenegrin bench is uh, desperate to ensure the intensity doesn't drop from his team. And it doesn't on the defensive end. Rebound, though, for Portugal. It didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock didn't reset. And time expires on Portugal. Had they scored there and got it down to 13, you might have thought seed of doubt at least planted in Montenegro minds. Two and a half minutes to play, but it remains at 15. Nice backdoor cut, Mihailovic misses, offensive rebound, recovered by Portugal though on the baseline. The pass pushed down the floor, but turned over straight away. Well, the quick offense from Montenegro wasn't wise because the clock is their friend. But the quick offense from Portugal, which is a necessity right now, was not orchestrated effectively. Pavlicevic, two minutes and change remaining, 15 the margin. Montenegro moving closer. Tick of the clock by tick of the clock. Radoncic passed off far side to Pavlicevic. Nice bounce pass. Little hesitation. Drew the contact. Spasojevic, he'll go to the line for two. Elsewhere in Group E this evening, France have recorded a comprehensive win at Hungary, 54-78.
That puts the reigning World Cup bronze medalist to 2-0 and at the top of this group. Hungary dropped to 1-1. One and one. They'll be level there with Montenegro. Portugal will fall to 0-2. Oh it's the top three of the four teams that make it through to the second stage. After six games here in the first stage, there's four more to come over the next two windows. So only one team bows out from this first stage from each group. Nikolic passes to Zugic. He puts it on the floor, goes to the baseline. Tough shot, though, from the angle, almost behind the backboard. Portugal playing for points differential in terms of the group and what might be come the end of the six games. Foul on Zugic. And it sends Ventura to the line for two. Final minute, they're down by 16. In the next window in February, Portugal go to France to face the favourites for the group and then host France in that fourth game of this campaign as well. So there's a a very real prospect of falling to 0-4 and, and then absolutely needing two wins from two in the final window in July when they go to Hungary and host Montenegro for the reverse of this fixture. Brito for three. And they have closed the gap to 11. So if they do go into that final game against Montenegro in Portugal in the summer, they have the opportunity of winning the head-to-head. -head. That is why Montenegro are desperate to keep up the momentum and to keep a big margin. And it's why Portugal is still desperate to close the gap. And it's been at 20. It's down to 11 to give them a chance at least of winning the head-to-head -to, -head to see if that might count for something come the end of this first stage. There's a long way to go until that point. As for Montenegro, they go to Hungary and then host uh, the same team in February. And then in that final window, they host France here before, of course, traveling to Portugal for that final game. Zoran Nikolic looking back out. Portugal not budging an inch on defence. Playing tenaciously. Forcing Zugic back and then Nikolic. Close to the steal on a couple of occasions. Pavli Cevic, he'll take the three. That's a dagger from downtown. From Nikola Pavli Cevic. 14 the margin. Montenegro into double figures for threes made. They made 10 against France in the first game. So they've now done something they couldn't do in the 2019 World Cup qualifiers. And they bank another in at the buzzer. 10 or more threes in back-to-back -back games. And this time for Montenegro, it leads to a big win. They were pushed by Portugal, but they got there in the end. And they did so by a double-digit margin. Behind the 22 points of Justin Cobbs and the double-double from Zoran Nikolic. I don't think that last one is going to count, but it certainly was enjoyed by the fans. 
The officials will check it to see if it's a 14 or a 17 point margin that secures the Montenegro win. Does he get this shot away in time? Pavlicevic, who switched away from Brito in midair and banked it in. It was an absolute beauty, but time expires before it leaves its hand, it seems. Time's gone there, and the ball's not gone. The points will be gone, but the win is with Montenegro. Confirmation that the basket doesn't count, but a nice moment for the home fans who have thoroughly enjoyed their evening. The final score in Podgorica, Montenegro 83, Portugal 69. A look at these shooting numbers. We don't get the percentage from Montenegro there, but you can work it out pretty much just below 50. Similar to Portugal. But the 10 threes for Montenegro and uh, many more free throws as well. They converted 21 free throws. They were led by the 22 points of Cobbs. Mihailovic had 16. Radovic had 13. But the best performer of the game by efficiency rating was Zoran Nikolic with the 11.11 .11 rebound double-double. Look back at the story of the evening then, which started well for Portugal. Dropping a couple of threes early before Montenegro bounced back and went on a run, opened up a gap and rarely looked back over their shoulder from that point. They got up by double figures or by high single figures fairly early. And they led in this game for all but a couple of minutes. Portugal spent the whole time trying to play catch up, trying the key word. They closed an 11 point gap in the first half down to three. And they closed a 14 point gap in the second half down to two. They closed a 20 point gap at the end down to 11 when they looked at make the scoreline more respectable for the points differential. But Montenegro kept on repelling them and got the job done. And did so with a number of players producing very impressive stat lines. Portugal had some big performers as well. Four scorers in double figures for them, 16 for Relval, the center, who also grabbed three offensive rebounds, 14 for Ventura, 13 for Brito and 10 for Amaranchi. But it wasn't enough. Montenegro, led by this man, Justin Cobbs, 22 points, 6 of 11 shooting from the field, 8 of 8 from the line. And that time bailed out with a big board from his teammate Zoran Nikolic. And they had enough inside and out in the end. The three there from Radovic, who fouled out on 13 points. Ten threes in back-to-back -back games at the start of this campaign for Montenegro. And they also shot 48% on the interior. Cobbs to Nikolic, out to the near corner of the Montenegrin ball movement. 12 assists for them altogether in the game, which was three fewer than Portugal, who moved the ball well themselves on the offensive end. How about that assist? We're seeing it for the first time. Rajoncic over the shoulder to Spasojevic. That's got to be one of the assists of the window. And it helps provide Montenegro their first win. They go to one-on-one, -on -one, tie level with Hungary, who lost earlier by a big margin to France, who go top at 2-0. Portugal still waiting for their first win as they fall to 0-2, the next two games to come in the second window in February, the final two games in this group to come in the summer. It's been an absolute pleasure having your company here on the road to the 2023 World Cup.
Before we go, let's take a look at the top scorer for the two teams. Justin Cobbs, 22 points. Adding to the 16 that he scored against France on Friday. He was four of eight on the interior tonight, hit two of three on the exterior as well. Portugal had a good spread on the offensive end, but 16 points from Daniel Helaval at centre, leading the way. And they came very efficiently indeed. Five of seven from the field, six of six from the foul line. He also had four rebounds, three of which came on the offensive glass and a steal. Not just their top scorer, but their best player in terms of efficiency rating as well. He was one of a couple of players, along with the 21-year-old Amaranchi, who really kept them in the game in the first half. But the influence of those two players faded in the second.